In the last session dedicated to the sulfate, I'm going to briefly summarize what we have learned about signals regulating the, those different processes. And I'm going to also show you how deregulation of the sulfate can contribute to development of cancer. In general, signaling in a cell and signals that are received and processed can be compared to a computer or a smartphone. There are many of signals surrounding the cell and they need to be controlled and processed in the nucleus and this can be compared to different signals in a PC, for example input from a mouse or a keyboard, which then needs to be processed by the central processing unit. And the central processing unit is a, a nucleus within the cell. So we have different signals that act as an input. So if no signals are present, there is one particular output. So if one signal is present, both signals one and two are absent, we can have a very different uh, output. If there are no signals received by the cell, this would, for example, lead to cell death because cell survival signals would be absent. If now signal number three is absent, but signal number two present, we would have a very different um, um, output. We could then have different combinations of those signals and all of those uh, different combinations need to be processed in the nucleus. So different combination of ligands binding to ref different receptors will lead to a very different cell fate. The output is also partly dependent on the cell type receiving the combination of the signals. The same signal combination can lead to cell death in one cell type, but proliferation in another. So the sy system is very, very complicated and needs to be tightly regulated. So what happens if certain components in those signal cascades regulating cell fates are getting deregulated? This can actually lead to cancer development. Uh, um, recently, um, scientist um, uh, Robin Weiberg defined uh, hallmarks of cancer that are usually present in cancer cells. And what you see, you can see here on this slide is actually Weinberg talking to two of my former PhD students at the conference. So what is the first hallmark of cancer you need to keep in mind? First of all, cancer cells are usually self-sufficient in growth signals. So they do not require external growth factors to be present to grow and undergo proliferation. They are also usually insensitive to negative uh, growth factors or anti-growth signals. They can no longer sense them and they grow, although those signals might be present. They are also able to evade apoptosis and they do so by insensitivity to death signals. They have limited, um, limitless replicative potential because certain cell cycle checkpoints are not longer controlled and they are also able to, um, to induce angiogenesis. They attract blood vessel supply from the surrounding tissue. Lastly, they are able to metastasize and perform tissue invasions. And some example mechanisms contributing to those processes are, for example, activation of RAS. And RAS is an adapter protein I showed you before. RAS is usually activated if growth signals or growth factors are present. However, in cancer cells, RAS is always on. It is constitutively active. Therefore, cancer cells do not longer require the presence of uh, growth factors to proliferate. In contrast, if uh, negative regulates, uh, regulators of growth factors are mutated or lost due to a mutation, for example, the so-called retinoblastoma protein, uh, which is in charge of regulation of P53, 
those cells can proliferate, they can undergo the full cell cycle, even though uh, negative um, growth um, regulation uh, signals are present. They evade all apoptosis by producing uh, IGF, which is the main survival factor I showed you in the session one. They turn, turn on telomerase, and this is something uh, I picked up in one of our genetics lectures. So they produce telomere and repeats, and they are not affected by cellular aging. They also produce um, um, VGF inducer, which is responsible for angiogenesis and can activate certain protein present on the surface of the um, uh, cell uh, that contribute to tissue invasion and metastasis. As you can see here, cell fate needs to be tightly controlled by all of our cell types. Deregulation of cell fate or certain signal transduction pathways involved in those processes can lead to development of cancer. Importantly, signal transduction cascades and receptors involved in all of those processes are quite important drug targets, especially if it comes to regulation of proliferation. And indeed, many, many pharmaceutical compounds are targeting those processes, uh, especially in cancer treatment. With this, I would like to end our session on cell fate and thank you very much for your attention.